Hi, I'm George Nordhaus, and welcome to Monday Morning. Oh, um, boy, uh, Brent Kelly has been speaking for us quite a lot. He's one of our most uh, uh, usual speakers and uh, for Monday Morning. He's a communicator, and boy, does he communicate a hundred different ways, which I, I'll tell you about later a little bit. But, and we've got a real surprise for you at the end of this, something you're going to really like. Here's Brent Kelly. He's going to be talking about communications, and, and he's, uh, communications, you know, we, we always talk about that, but he, he, I saw something he came out with, it. they said, people try to communicate, but they don't connect. And I said, oh, boy. And I went into that in much more depth, and then I began to realize, boy, there's a message there for everybody in the agency, whether you're CSR, producers, whatever. Uh, Brent, uh, I mean, Brent is the CEO of BizGrizz. How do you like that training? He was an agent uh, for a long time, for 15 years, uh, one of the top uh, young agents in, uh, in the country. He started this. Uh, how long have you been doing this now, uh, Brent, the uh, teaching, training? Uh, yeah, I've been, I've been doing speaking and training now for a year and a half, or thereabouts. Well, so, yeah. It's amazing how far you've gone. He comes out with, he has a base camp for in, for new people uh, or maybe smaller agencies learning and that's a great thing. I attended one of them. There was 12 people on it for, there were 12 for a long time. I mean, if I, for how many weeks, I don't know, but he comes out every day. Are you ready with this? With a very uh, uh, meaningful communications between, between him and us, whoever he's, he's sending it out to, and uh, with, with some tips that are really neat. I like it. Uh, and he does some more of that stuff. We're going to be talking about a little bit that later because he's got something for you to show you. But uh, he is really one of the best trainers uh, on uh, on the Internet right now or in our business, particularly for, uh, for I think, for new people. Is that fair, Brent? Are, are newer people your, your, your main uh, audience or otherwise? Uh you know, I think, I mean, certainly I can, I can connect well with, with newer producers and agents, but uh, I'll tell you, there's been, I've had a lot of success recently, George, just with working with a lot of agency principals um, on some of the things that maybe it's, it's been a while uh, since they've gone through some things. They need to kind of relook at what they're doing and why they're doing it and how to do it better. So, um, I, you know, I, 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 like to, I, I just like to serve people. I know you do. <laughs> you really do. You're an amazing guy on that. Okay. It's your nickel. Let's talk about communicating but not connecting. Yeah, absolutely. So, again, George, always an absolute pleasure to be on with you. Um, obviously, you're one of my favorites in the business, and I don't say that just because you have me on here, although I would. <laughs> but, <laughs> I'm, but, used uh, to it. I'm used but to it. <laughs> Go ahead. But I want to spend time today, um, really, as you mentioned, George, talking about the concept that we all communicate right, in the insurance industry. We communicate every day via email, phone calls, face-to-face -face appointments, Whatever we we are a constant communication business, but very few people, and only really the highly successful, whether it's agency principals or producers, understand how to connect, how to really connect with the person that they're talking to, and, and there's a huge difference, and that's why the title of this is everyone communicates, but very few truly connect. And I want to start off with a slide here that talks about talent versus skill, because a lot of people just think, well, you know, Brent, that's great. I'm just not a natural communicator. That's not my. That's not my. Mm -hmm. That's not my natural ability. And you know, just to be fair, there are some people that do have some more natural talents than others in certain areas, and, and speaking and presenting and communicating is one of those. But as you know, George, the more you do something, the more you work at it, the better you get, and that means it's a skill. Um, you know, I. I went back looking at my experience. I've told this story to you before, but my very first experience as an insurance agent in 2000 was one of the worst, most horrific experiences of my life. I mumbled, I stumbled, I screwed up, I came out sweating. <laughs> it was bad. Um, all the way to just a few years ago, in the last few years of the industry, I was named as one of the top 12 young agents, and now I run a speaking and training company. So you know, it shows that it wasn't like you just suddenly get better because you just show up, right? You have to work at it. And you know, George, you mentioned this too, and I, don't, I just because we've known each other for a while now, um, you know, you heard me speak at a webinar. Uh, well, probably about a year ago, the first time maybe you, you heard me speak on a webinar, and it was a disaster. Um, was it not? <laughs> yeah, it was. As a matter of fact, now that you know it, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, it was a disaster. So my question is, and again, I, I always want to improve, but do you feel like I'm a better communicator and speaker 
today than I was one year ago. Uh, totally. I mean, a heck of a lot better. And uh, you weren't your your slides weren't very weren't very meaningful and everything. You know, I mean, you were learning. I mean, we all have to have a learning thing. I I understand uh, where you're coming from because it's not easy when you get started on this. Particularly, you're, you're talking through a, your headset or your mic or something like that, and uh, communicating ain't easy until you've done it a whole yeah. lot. Yeah. But you're good and fine. Yeah, and Keep it's going. <laughs> Well, well, thank you, George. But I mean, it's it, and the point of it is not about me. It's about it's about you, the listener. Whether you're you know an agent or you're in the office doing whatever you run you're running your agency is the fact that wherever you are today, you know, and your ability to communicate and connect, uh, you know, it can change considerably depending on the time and effort you want to put in. So what I'm going to talk about today is five basic practices. George knows I like to keep things simple. But the, the, the point of it is, it isn't to be complicated, it's to do simple things that you actually do and act upon. And the thing with communication and connection, and I heard this, the ability to communicate and connect is the number one skill that's been found that will determine your level of success. Right? More than your experience, more than your natural talent that I mentioned. And so I want to share these five practices that's going to help you build rapport, it's going to help you simplify your communication, help you keep your audience's interest, inspire your prospects and clients, demonstrate that you're authentic, and then fully connect. And, and it goes back to, again, my, my, my business partner, I just spent a week uh, with uh, the John Maxwell team, which I'm part of, and you know, as John Maxwell states, everyone communicates, but very few really connect. And so that's what I want to share and teach today. Good. So with, with that, I'm going to kick things off with a little story. And I'm a, you know, I know some people that listen to this, some are sports fans, some are not, and I'm aware of that. Um, but I do want to share a quick story because it's very important into this first connecting practice, which is finding common ground. And, and this has been around forever, you know, build rapport, build rapport. But I, um, I grew up in the state of Illinois. I currently live in the state of Illinois, and so I've always been a Bears fan, all right? So some people are going to be cheering and some people are going to be booing me. That's fine. Um, but I, I spent four years in the state of Wisconsin working there, obviously surrounded by Packers fans everywhere. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and so we, we weren't going to change each other's opinion. It's kind of like in the political, and I, I'm not going political, I promise, but it's not like you're going to put a Facebook post out or have a conversation with someone who's got a different political opinion than you, and they're going to go, oh, by golly, you're right, I'm totally changing, right? Yeah. It, doesn't, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Same thing like, you know, with the Bears and Packers, and I'm not going to suddenly become a Packers fan because someone says, you should root for the Packers. But here's the reality. Even though we're going to have our differences, and we may not agree on some major points, there are things that you can do to find common ground. You know, for example, for me as a Bears fan, I appreciate the history and tradition of the Packers organization. I appreciated some of the players. Uh, I love their fan base and how they do things. So even though I'm not going to become a Packers fan, I was able to ask questions and find some common ground within that to be able to have, you know, I have some, you know, very good friends, and we kid her out, and again, it's a big difference between sports and business, but the same thing holds true in the business world, and, you know, the reality of it is this, it's very difficult, as this slide says, to find common ground with others when the person you're focused on is yourself. I agree and, with you. Let, you me, know, let me interrupt you a minute. Can you go back one slide? Just move it back. Please. I want to show you yeah, something. Yeah, I please. think that you said you're still a Chicago. Fan. I think that picture of you on the left is terrific, and you've got the C <laughs> right on your tummy. I think it's just great. Yeah, so yeah. that's nice that you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, go forward. Yeah. I, well, if you notice, George, I even I even painted my cheese head blue. Uh, just thought that would be a good thing to do. <laughs> okay, it's really not your picture, folks. Listen, that's uh, not your picture. No, you it's, not, it's young guy. not me, but it, it, okay, go. it could be. It I couldn't be. resist. Oh, that's okay. No, I appreciate it. No, so again, it's, it's, it's hard to find that. And when you look at a lot of insurance agencies and agents out there trying to connect with prospects and clients and people as part of their team, you know, even though maybe outwardly we try to say things that feel like we're connecting, the reality of it is, is that we're focused on ourselves. You know, how do I make the sale? How do I get a quote out? You know, all those kind of things. And so, there, there's even though maybe our intentions are good, uh, it's difficult to really again find that connection when, at the end of the day, you're really worried about one person, and that's yourself. And so, what I want to share is four barriers to uh, to, to finding common ground. Okay. What happens often while particularly agents, they struggle with, you know, I, 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 how do I build better rapport? And so there's four barriers, and I kind of talk about how to overcome these. The first one is assumption. The assumption gap in finding common ground is that, you know, I already really know what my prospects or clients, I know what they want, I know what they feel, you know, I, I, I got it figured out. I, I've, I've written, you know, 
25 retail shops. So I know what retail people want. So I'm just going to kind of go in with the idea. I already know what coverages and things that they need, and that's what I'm going to sell them, right? And I look back. I look back at my insurance career, George. It's funny. My first year in the business, like a lot of brand new agents, you mentioned I work with a lot of new agents, so I can sympathize. Is that you know not only did I not understand coverages and definitions, but I could hardly spell the word insurance probably at that time. <laughs> and you know here I was out talking to people and trying to learn and, and whatnot. But what I realized was. I couldn't assume anything because I didn't know anything, and so I would ask questions and get and get to know them and just meet the people. And I actually had some success where people were like, "I don't even care what you know, Brent. If you just call me back, if you just ask me questions, if you just care about me, let's talk." <laughs> uh, and I found that really interesting. And it's kind of sad, actually, in the insurance world, but it, but it's true. Um, the second the second barrier is arrogance, and this kind of goes back to ego. And you know, like it or not, there's a you know, any good person that's in sales in particular, in business, we all have some type of ego. Uh, but arrogance can get in your way to block that. In fact, I don't really need to know what you want, feel, or think. <laughs> I, I, I got it figured out. I, I'm, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the agent. You're the client. Just be quiet. I got it figured out. Right? Mm -hmm. It becomes very difficult to connect. Number three, this is way too, way too common in our, in our insurance world. and It's causing a lot of problems, especially the independent channel is indifference really the lack of focusing on others. We become somewhat indifferent to their wants and needs. And then finally is control. Um, there, you know, building relationships, finding common ground, it's a two-way street. Right? So, and I'm going to talk about questions here in a second and, and the questions you need to ask to build rapport and things that you can do. But if you're unwilling to open up a little bit, right? if you're, uh, you're unwilling to say that I don't want anybody to know what, I'm know, what I know, think, or feel, it, you've got to be a little bit vulnerable to build those connections, and oftentimes agents don't want to kind of open their door a little bit. They just want to kind of, you know, barrel down someone else's door. So there's a number of things that you can do to find common ground, and then I do this when I help agencies, when I train and coach, but I want to share just one that's kind of obvious. <laughs> this is Dwight Schrute from The Office. If anybody's an Office fan, you may get a chuckle out of this. I thought I recognized that guy. Yeah, I'm trying to, I was going to ask you. <laughs> yeah, he's cute. Yeah, he's He's from the show The Office. He's one of my favorites, but uh, that's just me. Uh, but Larry King, um, you know, and, and Larry King's been obviously retired for a while from what he's doing. George, you probably watched Larry King, didn't you? Oh, I, I knew he lived out where I lived in Santa Monica in, for a long time, and he, yeah, he lived there. Go ahead, though. Yeah, oh, no, yeah, I loved him. I yeah, loved he, him. He went to the heart of the matter, and he, he, had, he had beautiful suspenders, too. Yes, he did have great suspenders. Yes, he did. <laughs> Uh, but his, his, one of his favorite, my favorite quote from Larry King is that asking questions is a secret to every great conversation. And so whether you're trying to build, you know, to better connect with your team, your prospects, your clients, or company partners, asking great questions is the key to your success. And, you know, I ask agents all the time, and typically I get the same answer. I said, how, how many of you go into every appointment with a series of pre-planned questions? And I don't mean questions that are, you know, how much is your building worth? How many square feet do you have? I don't mean those type of questions. You'll get to those. I'm talking about questions about the prospect for the prospect. And, and very few, I don't know, I just kind of walk in and just kind of wing it. And, and again, part of it is you get better. You, 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 you engage in conversations and listen. You're be able, be better able to ask questions kind of on the spur of the moment. But for me, people say, well, wh where do I even start? You know, and, and here's the thing that, and, and, and some people agree, some people disagree with me on this, but you know, I always feel like, especially if I'm dealing with a business owner, and you hear oftentimes, you know, the question, what keeps you up at night? You know, because we sell insurance, so we want to get to the heart of the matter. What are you scared of? And I think at least initially, and maybe a question you ask later, but initially, my job is not to ask questions to put up a wall or a barrier or add extra fear that they may already be feeling. My job is to open doors. And what I love to do with business owners is ask them questions that fires them up, that lights their eyes up, that gets them excited, right? And so a very simple question, for example, that I use for a lot of years, George, with business owners, I would come in and say, hey, Mr. Prospect, I, 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 I'm so glad for the time today. I appreciate to get to meet you. I want to ask you a question because I work with a lot of business owners, and I, and I love to get a sense of where you're at. What are you most excited about right now in your business? What's firing you up? Hmm. And generally, generally, Business owners who put their blood, sweat, and tears love 
to talk about their business. Yeah. Oh my gosh, but let me tell you, we're doing this and this and this and this, and we're so excited, and boom, right there you've already made a solid connection. Mm -hmm. They know you care about them and their business. Good. Versus walking in going, you know, this is Mr. Insurance Agent. You know, what keeps you up at night? They're like, well, none of your business, <laughs> you know, and, until you've built some rapport there. So another thing I want to bring up too, George, is that if you work a lot with individual clients, whether it's health insurance or you're doing personal lines, mm -hmm. a really easy acronym, you may have seen this before, is how to form your questions. And say, what questions do I ask? I say, well, just use the word form. And the simple thing is, is you ask about their family. Mm -hmm. You know, tell me about your family. <laughs> and then you ask about where they work or what they do or what they like about their job, the occupation. Three is recreation. What do you do for fun? All right, what do you do for fun? And then finally is what's your message? What do you want to do? What do you want to accomplish? And so if you lose, if you use just these four, the form uh, acronym, you know you can learn a lot by learning about the family, where they work, what they do for fun, and what they want to accomplish in life. And you know the point of all of this is that being naturally inquisitive, being curious with people that you care about them, you know it helps them understand their story, and obviously put up, you know, build those connections, build those bridges. So the first principle, the first practice I talked about here again was was finding common ground. I'm going to shift off to number two if you're ready. Ready. <laughs> mm. um, so no, number two, how do you connect? How do you really connect, not just communicate? It's by keeping things simple. Um, I'm going to exaggerate here, but even though I'm exaggerating, I'm not far off of reality. Um, I have both demonstrated and listened to conversations that sounded something like this. Uh, and imagine meeting with a, a prospect before you're delivering a proposal on a commercial lines account. You know, in reviewing your CGL, I noticed some gaps in your products and completed ops coverage. So I, I ran a replacement cost estimator on your building. Looks like we need to raise your coverage on the building and, and probably your BPP as well. Now, luckily, as I found, you're in a really good protection class, so the rate shouldn't change that much. We also might want to discuss what symbol would be most effective for you on your BAP. Oh, God. All right. Now, I don't know what a I'm BAP is. Right? And I hope no one I don't know what they are. Exactly. I, don't, I have no exactly. idea. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. Exactly. And again, I, I'm, exa I'm exaggerating. So I get the fact that no one's probably going to have that exact vernacular. But I'll tell you this. When most insurance agents communicate with their prospects and clients, this is generally what their clients are hearing. I guess so. Um, because, because what happens is, is that we try to show off our expertise, how smart we are, how much we know about the business, the coverages, all the things that we do. And it's one of the biggest common connecting mistakes that insurance professionals make is they try to use complex language. And uh, I had a uh, my very first sales trainer, George, I was part of the um, – one of the first class, actually I was, the very first class, the National Alliance, which was, uh, I don't know if you've heard of that program or not, no. but they had an insurance, insur yeah. Oh, I like to live with it from the time it started. Go ahead. Yeah, so I was in the first insurance producer school in the year oh 2000. I was the wow. very first one when they did the producer school in uh, in Tallahassee, Florida. Huh. And my first sales trainer, his name was Jeff Jalona, he passed away several years ago. It's really sad, but... He was one of the best trainers I ever had, and he always said, I love this phrase, he said, Brent, stop techno-barfing on your prospects. Stop techno-barfing on your mm. prospects. They don't understand what you're saying mm -hmm. uh, when you try to use complex language. And so the, the idea I want to get across in connecting effectively by being simple is this. You know, I love this quote. In the end, people are persuaded not by what we say, mm -hmm. but by what they understand. I love it, too. You know, and it goes back to the quote, if they don't understand it, they can't apply it. So by being complex and, and, and trying to talk above them, you're not talking to them, and you're not making any type of connections. So I want to make this really simple. I like to make things simple. <laughs> what are four components to connect effectively? What does great connection look like in a simplicity? How can you use that? Well, number one is humor. We all love to laugh. My favorite quotes from Jeffrey Gittimer at the height of humor is listening. When people laugh, the next thing that they, you say, they are on the edge of their seat listening to. And you can make great connections by getting better at how to use humor. Number two is heart. Find something that stirs their emotions. You know, I already mentioned the question of what excites you most about your business. That goes to the heart, right? Because it's their business. They're, they're passionate about it. Number three is hope. Something that will inspire people. 
and I, I have a whole practice coming up on inspiration, so I'll, I'll dive into this in more detail. But give people hope. And finally, is help. How can you finally help them to do something better, right? And, and oftentimes, the insurance, this is kind of where we start, is the help. Um, but again, in my younger days, I would try to use all these complex phrases and, you know, okay, I, I learned a new coverage today. I went to a CIC class. I got to break all this stuff out. And all I was doing was confusing them, and I wasn't connecting. And so I have the most simplistic slide in the world here, uh, George, on simplicity. All the three S's of simplicity when you communicate with people. Keep your language really simple, say it very slowly, and have a big, bright smile on your face. <laughs> if I was training a brand new insurance agent who was obviously had to learn all the tangible stuff about insurance coverages and all those good things, I would say if you did these three things and you did them pretty well, you're going to have more success than you, would, than you probably imagine because people can connect with that. And so, again, get to the point, say it. Say it clearly, and sometimes just say less. <laughs> just say less <laughs> and, and ask questions and be quiet. You know, like I said, if I had someone who came to me and said, well, Brent, I don't, I don't know very much about insurance, I would say, great. And that means all you need to do is ask a bunch of really good questions and just shut up and listen and take good notes. All right, then you can come back later. Then you can come back later with something for them. So that, that's practice number two is to keep things simple. Number three I like to talk about and this gets missed a lot in the independent insurance agency is to create an experience that everybody enjoys. Because I can tell you, and, and George, you probably know this too, if I went out and asked, if I went out and pulled my neighborhood today and just walked around and said, hey guys, how you doing? let me ask you a question. Do you enjoy insurance? <laughs> you know. <laughs> you sure? I love it. Yeah. yeah yeah, 99%. I mean, people that sell insurance go, I don't like buying insurance, right? So 99% of the people don't like the product, right? Fair or not fair, you can argue that. But the reality of it is, in their mind, their emotions, they don't really like to deal with it, right? And so it, it's not a great experience. So you're going to have to do your best to create an experience that people enjoy, right, on a product that people typically don't enjoy. So you've got to go beyond your knowledge of, 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 of terms, of definitions, of coverage forms, of exclusions, of endorsements. You have to be creative. And so I figured, wh who would be a better example of how to be interesting than the most interesting man in the world? Now, if anybody's watched these commercials or seen them before, I think this guy finally retired. Uh, I don't know, if, have you seen this guy, George? Uh, he looks familiar, but I don't know who he is. He's the, there's these Dos Equis commercials, and he's about the most interesting man in the world. But that's not the point anyway. <laughs> so so what, what I want to help people with is how to be more interesting. What are some things that you can do in your communication to connect and be interesting uh, to create these better relationships? Number one is take responsibility to see for, for your listeners. Right? It, it's not up to them. It's not up to your prospect to be excited to see you because you walked in their door that day. In fact, they're probably the opposite. So you got to take responsibility. You got to walk in with a plan. You got to walk in with an idea. You got to walk in with your own excitement, right? Build that excitement yourself. <laughs> Number two, I've already kind of mentioned this. Communicate in their world. I I had a person say this to me, George. It hit me like a you know a slap in the face. He said, "Quit, quit answering questions that no one is asking." <laughs> I'd like what? that. <laughs> he, said, uh -huh. he said, he said, quit answering questions that no one is asking. Yeah, I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, because you're trying to give them all this stuff, and they're not even asking it. He goes, your prospects and clients don't care about what you know. They don't care that you know insurance. They don't. I promise you. <laughs> what they do care about is that you know what they know. You know, what do they know? Uh -huh. And that's what they want you to know about. Right? Number three, capture people's attention from the start. Um, I, <laughs> I heard a I heard a uh, uh, a study, and I can't remember where it came from, but basically mentioned that humans now have a shorter attention span than a goldfish. We are less than eight seconds that we can actually concentrate on one thing. So, when you walk into a room, whether it's networking, a prospect, meeting with a client, a team member, you got about ten seconds at best to get their attention to buy in. So. Find a way to ask that power question. Come up with a big stat. Engage with humor. Something to capture their attention from the start. It's really important. Number four is say it so it sticks. You know, I tell you what, all my independent insurance agent friends, I lived in that world for 15 years. It's easy to stop and to bellyache and go, man, you know, we don't have the marketing capacity of these big guys out there, these direct companies. 
or they don't understand what you know they're they're out there being funny right and they are but guess what if I went out there at the same people that I said how much do you like insurance and they said not at all if I asked those same people hey finish this phrase 15 minutes could uh-huh I bet you I I bet you every one of them, if not almost all, would say, save you 15%, right? And so what I'm challenging you is to come up with things that stick in your vernacular, right? And again, it, it's got, it, it may take time and a process, but you need, you know, it's okay to have a catchy slogan or, or, or something that your agency or that you're known for. When I was in a, a business group, a business networking group, I ended my, uh, my infomercial, my, my thing every week with Brent Kelly, where insurance is fun. And it was silly and stupid, but, but guess what? Years later, people are like, hey, Brent, are you still making insurance fun? So find uh -oh. something that sticks. Find something that sticks. Uh, number five is be visual. You know, uh, you, you've got to do things to where people can see things. Um, you know, what, what I found with being visual is oftentimes, this can go from anywhere. I, I had an agency that I work with that does personalized insurance, and they said, well, you know, it's hard because no one wants to see us anymore. I said, I agree, but what else could you do? Well, I don't know. We could, um, you know, we could do phone calls. Great. Absolutely. Yeah, you should be doing that, of course. I said, what about if they could see you, but you're still using email, right? Could you not email a YouTube link video where you're given a summary of a quote that adds your personality, your flavor, your body language, your excitement to that, or at least they can see you? I said, just be visual. Be visual. It's important. You know, finally, what, telling stories. Let me, yeah, uh, please, George. Let me interrupt you right there on that visual thing. There, are a lot of people now are going. I'm oh, Mike Demko with the uh, my new uh, videos, and well, even with agencies online, we uh, we just added 14 videos. Uh, not not about uh, not about coverage or anything else, but a video when you're writing to somebody and saying, "Hey, thanks for the time." It's two minutes or 60 seconds. I mean, it's not even 60 seconds; it's 30 seconds. But you, but they're using them in their email. They're just all, every time they send an email, they use one of the fourteen if they can, just to do it. I think more and more yeah. people are, are taking the time to look at those and uh, not, you know, uh, it, the visual. Uh, that's all I'm saying. I, I totally agree. Yeah, no, I think that's that's awesome. Yeah, Mike Dunker does a great job uh, yeah. with what he does in, in my insurance videos. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, it could be anything from a video to just you know being creative and using some of those graphics and images that stick out and that people can relate to because we are a very visual people right? that's a very, very important sense uh, and sometimes we kind of like to stick in with the facts and the text and all that and again people can't people won't know your expertise until they first know you and so in, until you can capture their attention and be visual some of the things it's hard to do right. and then finally I put here tell stories I, I would challenge every insurance agent listening to this that whatever line of coverage that you sell, obviously it's probably multiple, right? Whether it's, you know, water backup or cyber liability or property coverage or whatever, CGL or cyber or whatever, is to come up with a story. I don't mean just making stories up from, from thin air, but, you know, use your agency's examples, talk to people in your networks, your personal experiences. Every coverage that you have, you should be able to have a story to go with it in some capacity. Because when you can do that, when you can when when you can communicate in the term that the client understands, right? he doesn't understand commercial general liability or cyber liability or data breach. You try to explain it. Well, here's how it does, and here's how it works. And there's first party and there's third party. They don't. But when you stop and say, hey, you know what? I'm not going to get into all of that. But let me tell you a story about a client I worked with last uh, last month. Mm -hmm. Right? And you go into that. They go, oh, mm -hmm. I get it. Mm -hmm. Right? And so those are just some of the ways that I want to list how you can be more interesting, right? Good. Because I like them. As yeah, as uh, as uh, as someone told me too, this 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 was early in my career. I love this. I I went out there and I was I was uh, having a coffee with a guy. Um, <laughs> he was another agent. He was very successful, a very successful agent. And I was about in year five or six, George, of my business. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, I I don't know, like. I'm just not, I, I hit a wall. I'm like, I was doing well. I, I've hit a wall. Last year, I haven't done very well. I had a bad year. Things seem to be plateauing. You know, people just aren't interested. People aren't interested. And he kind of smiled and listened for a while. And then he stopped. And he said, let me ask you a question, Brent. He goes, are they not interested? Or are you no longer interesting? Ooh. Ooh. And I was like, ouch. Oh. Ouch. Because he was so right he was so right I kind of took it for granted I started going through the motions 
And I think that happens a lot with agents is we kind of get comfortable. We start to go through the motions. Like, why are people listening to us? Because you have nothing to say worth listening to. <laughs> uh, so you've got to take a challenge on to do that. So principle three or practice three would be um, creating an enjoyable experience. Number four is inspiring others. You know, not often do you hear insurance agents talk about, oh, you know, I'm going to go inspire my prospect or client today. Mm -hmm. um, but, but I do want to share a quick story from uh, my very first agency I worked for. And uh, this was about year two, George, where I worked. And my boss at the time, a highly successful agency. This is a, a very successful agency. Uh, grown a lot since I left, obviously. But, but he, said, he, he came out and he said, you know what? I'm tired of being behind the, you know, behind the desk. I'm not a manager. I built this business by seeing clients and prospects. That's what I'm going to go back and do. I hired somebody to take care of this. Let's go. And he goes, Brent, where are you going today? What's going on? I said, well, I have an appointment at 3 o'clock. Great. I'm going to get in the car with you. I'm going with you. And I was half excited and half scared to death because right? <laughs> I got my boss with me. Right. And I'm like, oh, no, what's going to happen? Well, we spent, I just want to, I'll shorten the story. We spent one hour with a client that they'd had for a few years. Um, <laughs> And, and but my, my my boss didn't know you know was just kind of coming in and I was thinking of all the questions I could ask like you know about coverages and you know all those kind of technical questions but my boss came in and within 30 minutes not only had connected from you know relationships and understand about their family but he had gone in and told them how much he believed in their business how much he thought they were going to succeed what they're doing it was it was a it was a message of inspiration. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, the, the 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 client was almost in tears, and I walked away in a good way. I walked away, and it was kind of like, well, what about the insurance stuff? He's like, oh, we'll take care of that in a second. Like they were like, yeah, we'll just send you the stuff. Don't worry about it. I mean, they were in, and it wasn't fake. It was real. He was asking real questions, and, and what he what he tapped into was what's called the inspiration equation. And when you put these three things together with your prospects and clients, you will inspire them. And the first part is what people know, right? And like I said, so they, they need to understand that you're focused on them and that you have high expectations of them. Too often we go in and see our clients and we're worried about our expectations, not theirs. And number two is what people see. Are you convicted? Do you love what you do? Are you setting the example? And then finally, what people feel. Do you have confidence in yourself and in them? You know, I always tell people, George, the very first sale that anybody ever makes is the sale in your head. <laughs> you got to believe 100% in what you're doing and why you're doing it, or people will see through it. <laughs> right? and, then, and then finally is your gratitude for them. Do you really show gratitude for them, the time they took, the opportunity to work with them, the opportunity to get to know them, the opportunity to be able to get to serve? That's true gratitude. And when you put those together, what people know, what people see, and what people feel, you've targeted the inspiration zone. Right? And, and magical things start to happen. Right? And I always tell people, like, this type of stuff here, it may not be in your comfort zone. It may be out of your comfort zone, but it's worth it. And you can do it if you push yourself and allow yourself to get out of that. And I always tell people, you know, connectors, talking about inspiration, connectors inspire people to move from I know how, right, to do now. They go from, oh, yeah, we have some insurance stuff we need to look at. Two, by the end of the conversation, okay, when do we get started? How do we do this? Because they are totally, you know, into what you're saying. That, and that's, that's true inspiration. The final thing I want to share, George, practice number five is earning credibility. Um, <laughs> you mentioned that I work with new agents. So whether you've been a your brand new agent, you've been in business for three months or six months, or whether you've been in business for 60 years, right, you realize that prospects buy into your personality, your promise, and your solutions in the first few months that you meet with them. Right? At first, it's just your word. You're telling them what you can do. But after about six months, your credibility starts to override your communication. Mm. As time goes by, the way you live, the way you live, the way you perform, the services you offer, that outweighs your words. Right? And there's a great quote that John Maxwell, my mentor, said, is that credibility is the currency for leaders and communicators with it, they are solvent, and without it, they are bankrupt. Wow. Right? The, the great agencies, the ones that I've worked with and that I know and that I've been part of, the great agencies and the great agents, they understand that their words only carry maximum impact for a very short amount of time. Mm -hmm. Actions will either build or destroy their credibility. And so 
I always like to tell you know people I'm speaking in front of a live audience or training, and just what I want to tell your audience here, George, is that this: you're your message. You are your message. The way you live, the way you care about people, right? It's going to determine whether other people want to connect with you. <laughs> and here's and here's why I, I can give really big examples. I mentioned you know with my uh, analogy with the Bears and the Packers right. that I mentioned at the beginning of this. Mm -hmm. I'm a sports fan. But I have seen, and you've seen too, George, I'm sure, some of the greatest, or at least thought of people, and I'm using sports examples here. You could do entertainment, you could do political people, whatever you wanted to do. But some of the most famous sports stars in my generation I've seen be on top of the world only to have it crumbling down because of what? They lost their credibility. Regardless of their talent, regardless of what they brought to the table, they lost credibility, and with it, they lost about everything. Example? I think back several years ago. Yeah, yeah. I think back a couple of years ago, Michael Vick. Um, he had the issue with the dog, oh, know, the dog yeah. fight. Now, was Michael, awful. Awful. Yeah, it was terrible. And this guy was, you know, a hundred million dollar athlete who was at the prime of his career. Yeah. Um, he was able eventually to kind of come back, but it was never like he was when he was at the top. You know, one of the one of the greatest examples. I think. Oops, sorry about that. I lost my. Uh, Screen there. You got it back? Oh. Okay. Um, one, of the, one of the greatest examples is, is Mr. Tiger Woods. Um, you know, and again, you could go in, there's injuries and things like that, but after the issue Tiger and his wife, he lost a ton of credibility. Oh, he, and he, again, he did. He was, you know, I, I always, uh, when I think of Tiger Woods, I, we lived in, uh, in, in, in the Pacific Palisades, lived on the fifth. Uh, uh, T of the uh, Riviera Country Club, and uh, uh, I called my wife. Says there's some guy teeing off a little bitty guy. Uh, I had never <laughs> seen him before, and I said, "Oh well, that's okay. He's probably not going to be very good anyway. He only made what a billion dollars. Unbelievable what he did. Then he walked <laughs> away from it. Yeah. Well, and another one. Uh, you've got uh, before we change uh, uh, at the Olympics this time. Look what happened. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, right, what a great Lock example, George. Yeah. yeah. I mean. Yeah, lucky. Yeah, I mean the swimmer, and it, it doesn't take long. I mean, again, I mean, think about that. I mean, just we'll use that example. I mean, so, and I don't know much about the story. I've been kind of my own little world on some of that, but I heard the basics of it. And yeah. the reality of it is, though, you got a guy who's trained for what, you know, oh, years and yeah. years and years and years, and won medals and put time and energy, and now people look at him in an entirely different light because of one stupid mistake. Yep, I agree. Right. Um, yeah. And, and look at even from a bigger example. This this example, obviously, with Lance Armstrong. Oh, oh boy, that's something. You know, I mean, yeah. and, and here's the sad thing about Lance Armstrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. You have to say, we all understand what you're going to say. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. So it, it, well, it's it, with Lance. It's not so much of just his income. It's the fact that he had this great foundation, which still is in existence, but took a huge hit because he was the leader. And, and and his credibility was tarnished, and so people said, "Well, maybe that's not an organization I need to you know, help out anymore." Even though it did serve a lot of people. So what's so your really, what's your really, major point right here on these guys? What are you really saying to people? What are you saying the, to me and the other the point, agents out there? The point of it, yeah, yeah. The point of this is simple, George. Is that regardless of what you know, how well you know it, right? Even the even some of the relationships you've built, if you lose credibility. You lose everything. Yep. And so for you to have a connection with people, they've got to believe that you're highly credible. And, and part of the, what I want to get across, George, is it doesn't take much. It can take you years to build your credibility and your reputation, only a second or two to destroy it. Mm -hmm. So I just want people to be mm -hmm. aware of that. That's good. Um, and I got this credibility checklist, so just things that people can use uh, as, as we kind of wrap up here. Credibility checklist. First thing is, have I connected with myself? <laughs> and sometimes we talk about, well, how do you connect with other people? First, you've got to know yourself. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What do you like to do? Number two is have you made right your wrongs? We're going to make mistakes. The point of this is not that you're, gonna, you're never going to screw up. We're all going to screw up. But then what are you going to do with that? Are you going to acknowledge that? Um, you, know, you think of, I keep using sports analogies, but all the steroid issues in baseball. You know, those people that fought it for a long time still have a tarnished, very tarnished reputation. Those that said, you know what, I, I did it. I did it, and I'm sorry. You can recover quicker from that. Number three is am I accountable? Right? Are you accountable to, to what you're doing? If you make a mistake, are you accountable to that? Um, I always tell people this, George. There's a quote out there that says, "What practice what you preach." Right? Yep. <laughs> practice what you preach. I would challenge everybody on this call and think about this quote: "Preach what you practice." 
Flip it. <laughs> Good. It changes like the way you look at things. Yeah, I love that. It changes the way you look at things. Yeah, I love that. And number again, these are kind of obvious, right? These aren't hard. You, are, you tell the truth. Here's what I'll tell you. Do, you. do I tell the truth? I'm going to add dot, 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 even when it's inconvenient. What about if it may cost you an account? Right? It's easy to say, well, I always tell the truth. Okay, good. What about if you have a $50,000 account, and if you tell the truth because you know some things about that account to the underwriter, you know it will be declined. What do you do? <laughs> what do you do? Right? These are tough questions. Mm. Am I vulnerable? Am I vulnerable? Right? Are, are you able to to open up to some of those things? And obviously the golden rule, right? That's that's uh, that's pr pretty evident. Just treat people well. Right? Just treat people well. And I want to wrap up with this. This is definitely a, a, a sales thing. You know what builds credibility, especially in business? Delivering mm. results. No. Yeah. <laughs> Delivering results builds credibility. When you go out and you help people. And you serve businesses, and you serve individuals, and you do a good job with it. Results build credibility. So that's my those are my five points, George, on on, on building, um, you know, building connections and how to do those kind of things. Uh, I do have a um, you know, I don't have any questions, but I do have a very special offer I'd love to to share with your audience. Oh, yeah, please do right now. Yeah, Perfect, do. Timing. Perfect timing. Yeah, I will do it. So for a, a limited amount of time, I I put this out actually just last week um, on my Facebook page and some other people I've talked to, is I'm willing to go in and do a leadership training for your agency, your company, your group. Uh, typically, some of my, all of my real restrictions are I like it to be for groups of eight or typically. I'll make some exceptions on that. But I'll do a one-hour leadership training either via webinar, like I did now, if, if you live across the country. I live in Illinois. Um, or I guess if you're willing to pay for my travel expenses, I'll come and do that, and I'll do the leadership training for free for one hour. That's terrific. And um, I, I will That's do that. Terrific. I will do that because it's my intention, just as I said today, that I want to serve people and I want to serve them well. And I'm also at the same time, you know, in, in building my business. For me, for you to see value, I have to show you value, and that's what I want to do with these: is, is, is give your agency some things that you can use, action steps that you can put in place right away to help you get where you want to go. So that's my offer, and uh, I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I don't blame you, buddy. You've done a wonderful job of presentation. I hope people are listening. We're getting a little echo, so I'll get off the phone. But I hope people are listening to this. Pass it along to all of your people in the agency. This is perfect, and that's a great uh, offer that you made there. My gosh, if I were an agent, uh, I would uh, take advantage of that immediately because I know how good you are. So once again, thanks, and uh, for the rest of you, I'll see you again next Monday morning.